How's it going everybody? Bob Hansen here from Elevated Prints 3D with Bill Clemmer. And we're here to talk to you about the Voxolab Proxima resin printer. Now, if this is something that you think you'd be interested in checking out and watching our videos, then stay tuned. Also, we wanted to let you guys know we got mics. Ayo! So hopefully you can hear us a lot better now. We know we've had some sound quality issues before and uh, we wanted to just get rid of that we got mike so again we want to remedy this for you we do <laughs> we appreciate all your guys' comments and feedback on all of our videos so we, we, we wouldn't have known if the video was that we didn't realize the quality was that bad on the sound so we really do appreciate it we knew it wasn't perfect but we didn't realize it was that bad so yeah thank you guys yep. appreciate that thank you so yeah this is just going to be pretty much a quick little it's a little review on what we think about this printer so mm -hmm. if it's something that you think you'd be interested in keeping tuned then stay tuned and check us out Looks like you guys wanted to stay tuned and see what this printer is all about. So first off, I just got to say, I really like the printer. I love I, it. I just want to say that right off the bat. Bundle I, of fun. <laughs> a big bundle of fun. I really enjoy it a lot. Um, Voxel Lab sent this to us to do a review. They did not pay us for our opinion. They did not tell us what to say. This is 100% our own opinion. So if you don't like it, well, that's our opinion. Good for you. We appreciate that. <laughs> So let's kind of jump on into it. Uh, let's just start off with the packaging. Yeah, the seller was uh, very good with packaging this yes. time around. Um, everything was snug fit, surrounded in styrofoam. Um, there was no movement in that box. Like everything was just solid, which was perfect. That's how I expect to receive something that has electronic components in it. So it was perfect. Um, setting it up, super easy. Very easy. Yeah, nothing crazy at all. Everything went together really nice and smooth. Um, yeah, very similar to any resin printer you're going to get out of the box. You're just going to pretty much pull it out and pretty much, it's almost ready to go, yeah. you know, right out of the box. Yeah. 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 I think it's really great. I enjoyed it a lot. You do need to level the bed. Yes. That's one of the things that we did. Yeah. And oh, the, and no resin comes oh with yes. it. Oh, yes. No resin comes with it. So yeah. make sure that you pick yourself up a bottle of resin when you order this. If you do get some resin, you should check out the Yosu resin, yes. which I don't know where we hit it. I've got it right now. Here it is. Here it is. Aha! Yes. This Yosu. is some great resin. We're going to show you some prints that came off of it with that Yosu resin. Thank you to Yosu for sending us that resin, by the way. We appreciate all you guys have done to support this channel. Yes. You're really true rock stars for keeping us printing all the time. For sure. Yeah. Both FTM and resin. Heck yeah. <laughs> So we'll just kind of jump back into it. The setup was really easy. Like he said, you just have to level the bed. Then you're just going to put the tray in after you're done leveling it and add the resin. Super, super simple. I kind of want Bill to talk a little bit about this because I have done a lot of resin printing in the past, but Bill has not. This was really much his first time from the start to beginning to doing resin printing. So I just want you guys to have that kind of like experience of letting him explain his experience of it being a first-hand time user with a resin printer. So with that, I'm kind of going to let Bill take the reins from here. So, let you talk about the yeah. prints. All right, so ease of setup. This printer was super easy to set up. Right out of the box, everything was already there. Super easy to access. Um, put the vat on and put the plate on. And then I... And the plate just goes on with one simple screw, just slides right in there and you tighten her on up. Yep, that's true. Yeah, it's got nice little guides too. One thing you so. want to make sure you do is level bed. Um, that's one of the first things you need to do. Um, it's in the instructions, super easy to read, super easy to understand. Um, use a piece of paper, put it underneath that build plate there. And uh, you want to loosen these two front screws. There's also a small grub screw in the back. You want to loosen that too. Drop that down in the home position and uh, make sure it's snug on that piece of paper and then you're good to go. Make sure you click the remember button. That was one thing that I forgot to do a couple times. Um, so make sure you click that remember button. And one thing I want to say real quick, uh, these grub screws are super nice because I've dealt with other resin printers that have the grub screw, the same setup style and they strip out super easily because they're tiny. They put some thick boys up in here. Yeah, they're nice. Printers. They're really nice. Really nice. But yeah. Slicing software. So we have Chai 2 Box. That's what we use for our slicing software for resin prints. Um, pretty user friendly, not too difficult to use. Um, like I said, this was my first time using Chai 2 Box. I did have a little guidance from Bob on some of the points like hollowing it out, which is important when it's a big fat print and you don't want a big <laughs> chunk of resin in the end. You want to hollow that bad boy out. Um, he taught me how to put holes in it, um, which is important to drain the resin when you're done. And um, yeah, then you just slice it. Oh, supports, supports. Oh, Don't forget yeah. your supports. Your supports. Um, it's always nice to print these types of busts and things like that at an angle where it won't be on the face or any, any particular spot that you, know, you want to be clean and perfect for the, for the print. 
Um, so I did this one, which we're printing Gollum right now from Lord of the Rings, at a 45 degree angle, um, flipped so that it, none of the supports hit his face. So hopefully it'll turn out really, really beautiful. Oh, yeah. So keep an eye out because we're going to post that too. And it's just your standard setting supports that we're using on this. It's able to really, really hold the dead. The printer does a great job. It really does, yeah. Yeah, it handles the supports super fine. I've seen some other resin printers where sometimes the supports get really, really weak, and it's not able to truly like hold its form like it's supposed to. But this does a great job. This, this is a great little resin printer. Any issues that I've experienced have just been me being new to resin printing, and it's been my first time. Um, so like I said, that, that leveling at the beginning was a little tough for me um, just because I didn't tell it. It was my fault. I didn't tell it to remember <laughs> where I put it. So of course, it, uh, we had some issues there. But after that, I mean, there has been no issues with this printer. It's ran completely perfectly. It's printed awesome prints for us, and we've really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's really been a great resin printer. I truly, truly do like it a lot. I very, it's exceeded my expectations for a resin printer because I mean I've had the LEU Mars, I've had the CH10 Iron Box, I've done the comparison of those resin printers, and this one really holds it weight right up to it. It's a very, very easy, simple to use, great resin printer, and the detail is really, really nice. Yeah. How would you think? What do you think about the uh, bed adhesion on it? I mean, I think it's great as long as you level it properly. <laughs> um, it's fantastic bed adhesion. I, I obviously I want to get a flex plate to put on it at some point. Yeah. Um, I just find those so nice. They're so nice to break off that resin print. Yeah. Um, but um, if you do get a flex plate, check out the uh, filament uh, or filament uh, flex plate. I really liked it a lot. Really great bed adhesion. Um, peeling the prints off pretty. Not standard. bad. Nope. Yeah. Yep. I just use a, a a little scraper. One of these guys. And then would you say that it held its uh, the level pretty good after peeling it off, or did you need to re-level it each time? Yeah, no, it, it holds its level good, um, as long as you're careful not to, you know, really, really move it. Um, but as long as you just hold it like this, and then just kind of chisel away the, the sides yeah. slowly there of the, uh, the supports, you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. And the nice part is uh, it's a uh, textured build plate. So uh, the nicest part about that is instead of it trying to cure the resin on that very first layer, on the super, super flat surface, it's actually able to cure it kind of a little bit into the bed as well. So I feel like it gives it a little bit more of a strength and grippiness to it. So that resin really sticks nice on there. I, no issues at all with it. He's an issue. Yeah, he's yeah no. In issues. Definitely not. Um, if you're anything like me, though, you're going to want to give it a level before you do a, ni a, ni a nice print, because that's just how I do things, but. You know, we all roll different ways. Yeah, we <laughs> Speaking of that, we have agreed on a, a pre-flight check for this, though. Yes. We, we have agreed on something that we should do always as a pre-flight check. That's to make sure that the bat is screwed in. That's like, you know, number one, we yes. want to make sure. Why is that, though? <laughs> Why is that, Bob? Well, one time we decided to start a print and not screw those in, <laughs> and the build plate just got lifted up with it. It only lifts up a little bit because it does click in a little bit, Yeah. but it's enough to completely throw the print off. Yep. And, and you have to restart and go again. Absolutely ruined it. So yeah. Well, that was my bad. You live and you learn. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we do. Um, yeah, so we make sure that this is tight on the top here, that, that knob is tight on the build plate so it holds it steady. We make sure that this vat is tight because that's super important. Yep. And um, we make sure that there's resin in the vat. Yes. Because that's <laughs> another thing you want to <laughs> make sure you have your resin in there. Um, and what else do we do, Bob? Is that? Uh, another thing we kind of started doing was when we're putting it onto this to level it at the beginning, where it's got these two grooves mm. that the resin, that the build plate will actually slide into, and we've been holding it all the way to the, I believe it's, it tightens to the uh, righty tighty. Mm -hmm. So it tightens to the right. And so what we've been doing every time is pushing it all the way to the right, kind of like cork, like cockeyeing it in there a little bit, and then tightening it because that makes sure that even for, let's say we don't want to level it again after the next print, we know it's going to 100% go to the exact same spot that it came from. So instead of, you know, putting it in there and it being a little bit this way, a little bit this way, it's all the time we always push it this way. So that way it's nice and nice and tight in there. And then we tighten it because then it keeps it at that same position every single time, mm. which I find nice personally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, super great print. Um, I really like the color and the look of it. The yeah. It's a nice looking little desktop resin printer. Yeah. I love it. I think if you had this on your desk and you, you you know, of course you want to be in a ventilated area because it is resin and you do have fumes and stuff like that. But you know, if you're showing a client like, hey, look, this is my resin printer, you know, this is what I, it's kind of what I'm printing off of, they're going to be, they're going to respect it. You know, they're not going to be like, oh, that's just some child's toy. They're going to know that this is the real deal, you know, that you're really utilizing a great machine. Um, we can kind of dive into the specs of it a little bit if you want to. 
Um, with this, I really like it that it's got the linear rail system on it. Or do we want to jump into the specs now? Yeah, let's jump into the specs. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I really like the uh, dual linear rail system that it's got on there. It uh, makes it so it prints a lot. I don't, know, I don't want to call it more even or anything, but it just prints nicer. It's less a chance of it shaking because it doesn't have that rod that can be bent. It's just a straight linear rail that goes up and down on the ball bearing. I'd say sturdier and smoother. It just feels sturdier yeah. and smoother. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that 100%. Um, build volume is really nice. It's not the size of like your standard Ellie Gumars or anything like that. It's got 155 on the Z, and then it's got 130 by 82 on the X and Y, which is really nice. It's bigger than your standard one. It's not the biggest build volume out there, but I'd say it's big enough to do some pretty nice prints on it. Yeah, no, it's good. It's got a good size. It, it, that is the one thing about the Proxima I would change if I could change something about it. That would be the only thing is the size of the build. Just make it even bigger. Make it bigger. I love big things. So that's, but that's it. That's the only thing. Everything else has been wonderful with this And printer. the print quality is really great. And the reason for that is because it's got the 2K monochrome screen on it, which means it's able to print in finer detail and faster. So that's super, super important for that. And I really, really like it a lot. There wasn't much that we had to do to this. I did replace the VAT one time, you know, just because I wanted to see what it was like. I wanted to see the user experience with that. Super easy. There was there's a yeah. lot of bolts that are in it, but it's all more or less, you take them all out, put the new VAT in, you press it, you put a little bottle cap underneath it to give it a little bit of wiggle room, and then you just tighten it all down. Super simple. I got it first try. I only replaced the VAT one other time before that, and I felt comfortable doing this VAT just fine, you know. Uh, we jump into the prints now you know i feel yeah, like you guys definitely. are ready for that everyone likes to see the prints we did have more prints than this but they were used in our first video and then we found out our quality on our sound wasn't that good and then we yeah. dropped some prints and then so we broke and i think we threw them away one of the consequences of working on concrete at the moment <laughs> but uh yeah yeah a couple eiffel towers there was one failure with the Eiffel Tower, but it wasn't on the Proxima. Yeah. It was on uh, one of our other printers, and we were just doing all three of them Eiffel Towers just to see how the comparison would be from yeah. printer to printer. Uh, this one nailed it. Perfect. Perfect, Perfect Eiffel Tower. I really wish we had it. Um, yeah, it was so good. But we, but we destroyed it. But that's okay. Um, so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I wanted to print something fun. I wanted to print something cool. And so I chose a pirate ship. And I think it turned out really, really great. I wanted to print something for my kids that they'd like. So I'll set this guy here. You can kind of take a, a look at that like the there. And all that but yep, stuff. just up like this with supports all along it. Um, lots of supports. Lots of supports, but honestly, they were super easy to remove. This one thing I like about resin print supports is that they're so easy to remove compared to the FDM. Um, FDM can be more difficult. It can leave a bunch of marks and stuff like that, um, scuffs on the print. Yep. But with this, oh man, it just pops right off. And it's like, I mean, right off. N didn't leave any, any crazy marks on this. It looks great. I love it. Yeah, me too. Then we got, what, the next one was that elf? That we this was my first accomplished was. print. So my first accomplished resin print, it came All out like this. All on its own, I like this. Help it. Yeah, I printed it, it on my own. This elf, we wanted to do one with like some details on it, details in the hair and the braids. Turned out really good. You can see detail in the eyelashes. Um, really awesome print, really fun print. It's a good one. Sorry that you can't see the detail as good with this green resin. It's a really great resin, and especially if you're trying to do like a slime monster or like a cool little ghost yeah. or something like that. It, and it does, you does have detail. You just have to really look for it. I know our background probably isn't the best. Let's put our hand behind it. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. But I mean, it's a really good model. It really handled it just fine. It did. But now with this next one we're gonna show you, you can really see the detail. This is that Yosu Gray, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, it is. Again. It is my favorite of all of the resins I've used so far. Yes. Um, it just captures the detail so good on everything. It really does. Um, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. That's what we're using right now as well mm -hmm. in this print. And yes. I can't wait for this to be done. Uh, I know. I uh, this one it. is incredibly detailed. I mean, when I put it on the slicer, it was phenomenally detailed. So I really, really am excited about this print. No, I'm really excited about it too. It's it's just been an all-around great printer. I've been mm -hmm. super, super happy with it. Oh, yeah. I haven't had any issues, you know, no reliability issues. It's just, it's been going and going and going, you know, nonstop, no problems. Yeah. It's not that loud. One thing I do think is really cool, I don't know if you'll notice it while you're watching it print right now, 
is that usually with resin printers that it just goes, it comes down, it lays the layer, or it doesn't lay the layer, it flashes the layer technically I would say, and then it just comes back up and then it goes back down. But this one does a variation. So what it does is it goes down, does flashes the layer, and then it goes up slow and then pops up fast and then goes down fast and then slows back down. And I believe that that is to make it so it comes off the bat a little bit easier. I'm not 100% sure, that's just a, my best guess. Or maybe just so it can find its origin of where it should be going yeah. back to easier um, or more accurately, perhaps. Yeah. But either way, it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's a nice it feature. Nice. Oh, and talk about this cool little thing that's printed on there. Oh yeah, um, that right there, you just, when you take off this build plate, you can slide it onto that side mm -hmm. right there and tighten it back down. Um, and it'll sit it at an angle so it drains that resin right off the build plate for you. Which is super nice. Because yep. then you're not having to hold it and sit there. I didn't design it and neither did Bob. We actually found this one on the community, yeah. um, on a community website. I'm yeah. not sure which one we found it on. But props to the designer, whoever you are. Thank you so much because it's really great and it's yeah. helped us a lot. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think... That's pretty much the main thing about it. I mean, it came with everything you needed to start resin printing, the scraper, besides the resin is the only thing. Yeah, you besides the resin. So all make of the sure Allen you wrenches, add that on there. All the Allen wrenches yep. you need. Every, every bit of tool. Scraper. Yeah, everything was there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's just kind of give it our final thoughts, you know. Bill, do you think that this printer would help elevate your life Heck in yeah. resin printing? Heck yeah. It Heck elevated yeah. my life in resin printing. Hell yeah. That's and this is the first time I've done it, and I love it. It's wonderful. It's He's amazing. Hooked. I am hooked. I've been, I've been. I've got tons of things to slice up right now. It's amazing. He loves resin printing. Well, you know, if you like this video, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to share it. You know, if you yeah. really like this video, share it on some platforms that you have, or give us a little shout out. Let us know what you think of the video. Was the sound quality better? Was it worse? Hopefully, it was better. <laughs> Hopefully. How can we improve? What can we do better? Yeah. Is there anything you guys want to see us do? You know, if there's something you really think that we should do as our next video, we do have other videos coming up soon. We got probably like two, at least two more videos that are going to be dropping within the next couple months. I know we don't do a ton of videos, but we just want to make sure when we do the videos that they're what you guys want and they're good videos for y'all. So thank you again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, that's just how we continue to grow on YouTube so that way we can keep making videos for y'all. And with that said, uh, thank you for checking out our video. I really do appreciate it. You guys are amazing. We do appreciate all your support. Anything Definitely. You want to say, yeah. Um, not really, no. Perfect. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Hope you all have a groovy day. Thanks for checking us out on Elevated Prince 3D. I'm Bob Hansen. And I'm Bill Clemmer. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.